Hello dear subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Vivs from SlideNerd here. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to perform queries on our SQLite database. In my previous videos, I've been talking about the schema of our SQLite database, how to perform insert queries. If you guys haven't seen them, please check the links right below in the description text. So here, let's talk about the query, select star from table name, where something equals to something, and group by, order by, having kind of queries that we usually have. So here is my table, vivsdatabase.db, it's actually my database file. Inside that there is the vivs table which contains the underscore id, column and name column. This first one underscore id is an integer auto incremented. Second one name is the place where you fill your string data or where care data that you call it. The, all this data about the schema is contained inside the class called vivs helper which I've already discussed in my previous videos, again check below to the description text. And then SQLite database object is what I get when I say helper.getWriterDatabase. This object represents my physical database stored on which I can perform the queries. So let's say I want to perform a query that says select underscore id comma name from web stable. In other words, I'm selecting the entire column one and the second column. I would say something like this db dot raw query, and this would first argument I would pass here is the query that we just created about. And the second would be the selection arguments which are nothing because here we have no conditions that say select star from table name where so and so applies right. We are not having any conditions we just want to select everything inside. And this is going to give you a cursor object now again if you guys are new to this cursor object don't worry we'll be talking about this cursor object right in this video in a little bit later. So what I have is public cursor raw query now let's take a look at this method and try to understand what it wants string sql and string selection args these are the two arguments it takes there's a string array and there's a string so sql is a query or a valid sql query without a semicolon now you're not supposed to put a semicolon over here if you guys notice because the method automatically does that for you and selection args is when you talk about having a condition where now we will be talking about how the selection args works properly when we take a look at the real example in the next video but for now, remember one thing, you don't simply write select underscore id name from webs table where name equals to webs. What you often do sometimes is you say where name equals to question mark and you fill the value of the question mark inside the second parameter which is selection args. Now like I said, if you don't understand this, we, we will understand this better when we talk about an example in the next video. So let's talk about the cursor object which is positioned before the first entry. In other words, the cursor represents a kind of control that lets you move from the top to the bottom of your result set or you can say your result that you have obtained. Now let's take a look at this cursor object in detail and try to understand what it has. Cursor provides read write access to the result set returned by the database query. Now if you guys remember when you execute a query what you get is either an entire column or you may even get a subset of the entire table. So those rows and columns together that are contained in the result are what make a result set and your cursor lets you navigate this result set to go from bottom to top or top to bottom depending on your choice. Cursor is not necessary to be synchronized and hence be careful when you are using multiple threads to access the cursor simultaneously. Now let's take a look at some useful methods you have. For example there is a method called string get column name here if you specify zero over here as the int column index this string statement will return the name of this column which is underscore id if you pass one over here it's gonna return the name of this column name over here so zero one two three and so on so that's what this method does same way there's a get count that tells you how many rows were returned inside your result now you can use this as a measure to determine if you got empty results or whether actually two rows or one row or something returned in your result set then there's the get dot 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 int column index it's like get string get int get boolean whatever then there's the boolean move to next which lets you position the cursor from the first to the next and so on so we will take a look at how this works shortly so don't worry about it so let me talk about the second method which is the android recommended approach of performing queries so here the same query select underscore id name from web table will be executed as follows you will have a method cursor this is the return type of that method query is the name of the method you as you specify a whole list of arguments over here the table 
what columns you want to select like for example here you have said underscore ID comma name so those two must be inside this array then you say string selection which is when you say where name equals to vibs then that name should be this condition inside here in the selection there is a condition and when you say name equals to vibs and vibs can be one of the selection args over here then there may be a group by statement ha having ordered by and all those things out there so let me again revise those things table is the name of the table you have columns is the list of columns that you want to process now remember the reason why we specify columns explicitly here and we don't use select star from table name is because this is a mobile device you don't want to select unnecessary columns and slow down your app and hence always make it a point to select only those columns that you truly require over here and don't just write select star from table which you usually do on a desktop environment right and then there's these conditions which we'll be talking about now again group by order by having and all these other clauses that you guys see over here we'll be talking about them with the help of a more complex example when we'll be working out a very complex schema in SQLite in the upcoming videos so then there's the columns which you can say vivs helper dot name if I just want one column over here or I can say vivs helper dot ID comma vivs helper dot name kind of stuff now these are strings that we have created inside the vivs helper class again this was covered in the database schema videos and the query would look something like this I'll say DB dot query first the name of the table which is vivs helper dot table name columns that is the list of columns that I want over here for example here I have set underscore ID comma name but here in string columns I've just selected name over here which means only name column is gonna be returned inside the query and then there is a null 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 if since I had no conditions over here no clauses or anything now again if you guys don't clearly understand what is happening don't worry too much about it when we talk about an example you will understand the remaining 50% of this so how to process the results now let's take a look at how the cursor exactly works so here let's say this is the result set that is returned to me after processing the query so what I have is initially the cursor is positioned before the first element I can call cursor dot move to next if the results are not empty then it returns true otherwise it returns false so your job is to browse by saying cursor dot move to next and if it returns true then use the while loop and keep moving and while you're moving just obtain the data from the given column or given row that you have over here now again if you don't understand much of the code over here don't worry about it we will be talking about what this exactly does but in this state uh, piece of code that you see over here what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to move from the rows here by saying move to next now this is gonna go from first row to second row to third row and so on as long as move to next returns true then I say get int index 1 now this is the first index that we have over here and this is an integer like I said it's an integer auto increment and hence I'm calling cursor dot get int from the position number 0 or 1 or whatever you have over here for the index 1 and that gives me the underscore IDs value now if I want the value of the name webs over here I say cursor dot get string and I supply the index 2 which represents the index of this column name over here and that gives me the name and this is gonna happen for the first row then move to next will execute maybe it's true then we'll go to the second row get the first ID get the name go to the third row ID name and so on now if nothing is there of course the while loop will terminate so these are the things that we had to discuss at a high level now we will be talking about these in a lot more detail in the next video when we run the query ourselves in Eclipse in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in your comment boxes below thanks for watching I'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day